Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is Visible by Craig Petty. Before we do this review, can you please like and subscribe? Very important. Hit the bell icon so you get notified of interviews. Interviews. I can say that because I've just done my first one in months, which was lovely with Luch. So have a look at that. Um, and obviously live shows, all that kind of things, you'll get notified. And when I can't do the live shows, because that's very important, because I couldn't do one this week, uh, because of them meddling kids. Right. Uh, oh, and very important, go and see Card Magic Course. That's the thing that runs the whole thing. Without that, there is no this. And if you like this, you will love that. See what I did there? This is becoming a prop. That's like a, a thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> that isn't just rambling. <laughs> Anyway, let's get on with the review, shall we? Yeah, oh, I'll tell you a bit about Card Magicals. It's brilliant. Have a look at that. All right, there you go. Uh, right, Visible, Craig Petty. Lovely box. There you go. That's good. Because it's from the 1914. Always get a lovely box. And inside, you get two invisible decks because this is an invisible deck project. Uh, and the whole point of it is to tell you that you can do much more with the invisible deck than just the invisible deck routine. Which, weirdly enough... I don't really do that much. And I did, back in the day, it was because I used to panic a bit about the maths. And Craig mentions this. And I know that that's ridiculous. It's not even maths. You once you know the invisible date, you don't have to do the maths. You just go, oh, it's that card and it's that card. And it's super easy. It's miraculous. It's brilliant. I'm a sleight of hand person, but I have wanted to, and I think I said this to Craig ages ago when we were, before we filmed the, the interview that we did for his channel, um, I said, I want to get into because everybody uses it and it's a good backup and it's good for certain things. And he said, well, I'm doing this project. And I was like, great, that's going to be exciting because I want to learn about it. And I don't just want to do the standard routine because I always felt that there was so much more you could do with it. And obviously there are loads of decks that are very similar, that use the same principle, that do sort of certain things. And the point of this, I think, is to say that you don't have to buy all those other decks. If you've got this, you can actually create different tricks with it. So what are those different tricks? And I have them written down because I won't, so I don't forget them. Uh, but I'm not gonna go through all of them because this is a long project. This goes on for many hours because I sat and did it in one. Well, I did it in two. I don't know how long it is, but it's hours worth of stuff, right? You, you, nobody's gonna buy this and go, there isn't enough. I wanted another hour of stuff there. I feel like I haven't got my money's worth. It's a bargain for what you get. But my favorite ones were, the, the, the actual handling that, that Craig shows you, for those of you that are really scared of the maths, that I've seen, I think I remember saw Dynamo doing this on a Jonathan Ross show, where you do it but you hold it up, which actually works for a lo in, in a better in a lot more... Um, in a, what am I trying to say? It works better in... Works be <laughs> I can't get the words out. It works better in more circumstances. That's still not right, is it? But you know what I mean. In most circumstances... Is that what I'm trying to say? Anyway, you hold it up, so you're not down here, which is fine. So I like that. The future Craig was similar to a routine, and he does, um, I and mean, there's been loads of routines like this, but Noel Quarter did, did a routine on, on Panatello, which he, he hasn't stolen. He's been doing this for ages, but it's, a, it's something you're going to come up with, but a really nice use of a phone in a good way, not just a rubbish way. Whenever he gets a phone out in a card trick, I sort of go, oh, here we go. Uh, but it's brilliant, and it's really good, and it's a time travel thing that actually works, and there's a lot of humour in it. I think that, that a lot of people will want to do this, and there's the thing you can get for your phone, which I didn't know you could, which makes this possible, um, which is great. So I think most people are going to do that and go, oh, I've got to do that. It's, it's really good fun. This different presentation of the invisible deck. The cards across is something that I think is really nice. But now we're starting to get into things. After the first couple of presentations, we're starting to get into taking the deck apart. Now, it's good. You get two invisible decks in here, which is why it's important, because you are going to start taking them apart and doing things with them, which isn't very difficult. It's very intuitive. But my feeling is, well, we'll go on to it in a minute, but I think you're going to want to buy more invisible decks once you learn all this stuff. But anyway, that's not, not a problem. But you're going to be able to do everything on it with, with this. Uh, the Cards Across uses that you can do it with a normal deck as well. So he has a presentation with really miraculous using two decks, but you can actually use a normal deck and your invisible deck. And, and that's probably what I would do actually, because I like the idea of somebody takes three cards, they look at them, they go into the deck, they vanish, maybe with a bit of sleight of hand or your invisible deck, and they appear in this group of 10 cards that importantly, you've just shown very clearly to have no other cards face down in them because they're face down the appearing cards. 
And that's the good thing about the Invisible Deck, isn't it? You're starting to go, actually, there's, we can show 10 cards or a deck here in a certain state and then spread them with no sleight of hand and cards have appeared. They just kind of pop into the deck and it's, it's a really powerful thing. And that's kind of what's going on here. It's just different ways of using that, but in quite creative ways. So we've got predictions. There's a time prediction and a celebrity prediction. Now, for these, you are going to start needing different things. Not for the time one, but he uses Celebrity Passage which is the Brett Barry um, Celebrity Force book, which I think is great, actually, and I have it. Uh, it's really good, but you can predict a celebrity with, with, with many different methods, and he talks you through all these methods, but something else is going to have to come into play there. So there are a few things on here that you're going to have to bring other things in or find creative ways, um, to, to different ways to do the things he is telling you. But he does talk about that, and he does kind of focus on this. You know, you don't have to do celebrity presage or this or this. You can kind of do it in various different ways. But the point is that it's not about... I don't think it's about taking these routines. And by the way, there's a triumph in here. I'll go back to that. There's a triumph in here, which I really like, actually, which involves showing... which I hadn't thought of using it for this. Showing the cards all mixed up and then spreading them and they're not mixed. It's a great, it's a really obvious thing to do, but it's, that's really good. And he uses a, an idea, he said that other people have come up with as well, and he credits very well on this, of shaking the cards up in a bag and then showing them all mixed up back to front when you've put them in the bag. And I, there's loads you can do with this. And as I was just about to say, I don't think it's about, here's a load of routines you're gonna take straight off me and do, which I think you will do, but it's more about, here are loads of ideas. And he does say this at the end, you can use your creativity to come up with your own. And when people say that, sometimes I think it can be a bit of a cop-out because it's like, here's a load of half-baked ideas, take them and run with them and see if you can come up with decent stuff. <laughs> and it's not, it's not that. They are good routines and you can do them and they are very strong. And some of you will do them straight out of the box. But the creativity part comes very naturally. So when he's talking about forcing a time, you can straight away go, well, I can force anything, because the way that works, I can write anything on that card and, and it can fit in, as he said, with a trade show, with a certain client. Good thing about Invisible Decks, they're not expensive, so if you want to tailor these tricks that it isn't a time prediction, it's a prediction of someone that works for a company or someone like that, you can do, and you're not going to break the bank. It, it's an inexpensive prop, um, which is really handy for this kind of stuff. The other thing I'm going to mention, oh, this conditional transpo, which I really liked as well, which I've just seen down there, which is... A transposition, but not of a card, of a state of a deck. So you've got a messed up deck back to front. You've got a deck that's all facing the right way. Um, and then they change places. This deck is now facing the right way. And this deck is now all mixed up back to front. So I really like that. And I think, again, there's loads of ideas. You could you could take that and create your own ideas with that. And at the, the end, there is the uh, Invisible Aces, it's called. Which I keep forgetting because Invisible Deck... Invisible Aces is, is a really nice trick just with four cards and as he says you can do this and then go into your your ID de um, uh, presentation if you're doing like a classic presentation and it's a really nice thing of, of cards uh, going down using Equivoke to go down to a card but it uses something that's already in built into the in built in built into the invisible deck in a really clever way actually so it uses a little bit of equivoke to get down to card and the card appears between these aces and again you've just shown them completely clear really really nice and again go straight into your invisible deck routine from that and there are there's something in here there's a sort of any card at any number where he uses a mem deck as well but you can also use a crib so you could do that without a mem deck but again you start mixing invisible deck with a mem deck and you go all oh, right and then he's got this um What's it called? The mate deck. That's it. The mate de deck, uh, which I kind of like. I think it's a little bit contrived, but I think it, he says it's a, that is the one that he's kind of started working on and hasn't really um, spent loads of time on. But it is an idea that you can take for yourself and, and start working with. And maybe you can come up with something like that. But and never do as I do. There's loads of classics on here. I think this is really good. And the thing about this is I was reading Ascanio recently. And we, we did a thing on the course about it, of his stages of practice. And one of those stages of practice is assimilation, that idea of really starting to understand the trick you're doing. And that is what this is about, really. It's about taking something and teaching you really how it works and what you can do with it and really understanding. It's a bit... I had this with... Tri and I know it is a simple concept, but it, just because it's simple, it doesn't mean there's not complexity on the edge of that, on the other side of that simplicity. And I think that that's the thing. You can take the simple concept and create actually a lot more than you thought you could. And it's the same with... I remember 
for years I did trials, but I didn't really understand how it works. And when you really understand it, you go, oh, actually I could do this, or I could, or I could cut that down to this, or I could make that short, or I could make that more streamlined. And that's the beauty of, um, of these kind of projects. And I think he's got a size Stebbins one coming out this week, or it may have just come out, which is a similar thing. Um, which again, I'm really, something I've never really explored, and the, the idea of learning it properly and really understanding it is a, is a good thing. There's a couple of, I wouldn't say negatives. If you're looking at a thing, am I going to do all of these routines? You're probably not. You're going to do a couple of them, and then the, the others will help your learning. But with, I would watch all of it because within them there is good teaching of other things as well. So there's a cut deeper force, there's cross cut force stuff, there's different techniques. There is a routine, um, which I can't remember what it's called, but uh, no, I can't remember, but second or third routine, which uses a few moves in it, which for me gets away of the kind of, away from the point a, a little bit of using the invisible deck, but it teaches you these moves or in, quite briefly, but you could learn those within this as well. So there's all, a lot of hidden learning. And I always say to people, even if you see an effect, you're not that keen, watch the, the, um, the explanation because you'll get a load of learning from that. So I think it's a it's a good educational thing. It's I, little niggles. I always think they should kind of you know swap. I just, I just felt for the spectators. They watched loads of tricks, and I suppose because I watched it in one, it felt like they'd been sitting there a long time. But but it, you know it'd be nice to swap things up a little bit. But I think that's more because I sat and watched it in one. This is not something you want to sit and watch in one. You want to learn one thing, go and play with it, come back to it, and it will last you months. Uh, which is again why I think it's really worth the money. Anything else? Um, no, the, like I said, you're gonna ha you might want to buy a couple more invisible decks and, you, and taking them apart. For some people, it's going to be a bit, a bit of a faff. I know people don't like doing that, but actually, when you do it, you can put it back together again, and and I, I, it's not a problem at all. It's a really good project, very nicely done by the 1914, really nicely filmed, produced very well, and does what it says. It teaches you a lot about the invisible deck, uh, which is great. So there you go, all the details will be below. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve Fortner. Check out carbmagiccourse.com, get your free spread cull download course, carbmagiccourse.com forward slash cull, and um, have a great one. Cheers.